Now let's do another model sim example simulation, uh, but this time on a little more complicated circuit. Uh, it's still a three input <clears throat> combinational logic circuit, but this time it, the information is provided as a minterm list, so instead of a true table. Uh, and, and it's also going to require a sum of products or product of sums implementation. So let's look at an example of how we do this using concurrent signal assignments with logical operators. So the first thing that happens when you use this approach is that <clears throat> you have to actually derive the logic expression before you can model it. Okay, So this is not exactly how VHDL is intended to be used because you are doing something by hand and then entering in the logic expression. VHDL is really uh, intended to be you model the behavior at a higher level like the truth table and then allow the circuit you know the synthesizer to create your logic but this is just to get practice using this approach <clears throat> so if we started with the minterm list uh, one of the first things we could do is we could put it directly into a truth table so we have rows one four and seven asserted uh, and then what we can do is let's just use a canonical sum of products so we're gonna have the minterm for row one which is x naught y naught z <clears throat> and then we'll have the minterm for uh, row 4, which is x, y naught, z naught, and then we have the min term for row 7, which is x, y, z. And remember uh, that we have dictated, or the problem description dictated the name of the system, which is just called proficient ex, for example, and notice that the inputs are now x, y, z. So we want to really pay attention to that because if we don't design it as uh, asked for, what will happen is that the test bench that is going to be provided will not be able to find your system. Okay, So that's one of the most common things that will happen is you might misspell or misname your system and the test bench is trying to find it and it can't find it and your simulation is just dead. And so one, that's it's really important to make sure that you have the right system name as called for, Proficient X, <clears throat> and you also have the right port uh, names. Okay, so I'm ready to start and I'm just going to implement that with logical operators. But let's first go ahead and, and get set up with our files. So this is going to be a new simulation. So I'm going to go into my VHDL folder that I created before. And I am going to create a new folder for this simulation. So what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call it proficient example. And then I'll go concur sig assign. And so that folder is going to hold this, this simulation. All right, so I go inside of that, and what I want to do is I want to download this uh, link, or the, excuse me, this test bench. So I'm going to right click on it and say save link as, and it's going to ask <clears throat> where to put it. And so the display on this is a little big. So I go proficient, and then I say save, and <clears throat> there it went. Okay, so if I go into my folder, uh, here's my folder. I have proficient example TV. Okay, great. So now I'm ready to create my new system which I'll implement this uh, this logic expression. Okay, so go ahead and fire up model sim and model sim comes up and I'm gonna do file new project so let me stretch this over here so I'm gonna say file new project a little off the screen there but file new project and I'm gonna make sure to browse to the right location so I have my new I am in desktop VHDL and my proficient X concurrent signal assignment folder I say okay and again I'm just going to name my project file project and I go ahead leave the default library name as work and I say okay alright so it creates everything and again it asks me do you want to create a new file add an existing I'm always going to add an existing file because I always add my test bench and it's always in the in the same uh, project folder so it's it's easy to find so I go project uh, proficient xdb so I add that and then it pops in there and then I'm gonna also going to create a new file and this is going to be proficient X and that's it and it's going to be a VHDL and this is where I'm going to actually design my system okay so I'm sitting here and I have my two files and I can kind of verify that everything's okay if I double click on if I double click on the test bench I've got VHDL if I double click on my new file it's blank and notice that down here in the transcript I still have some warnings from some prior work that I did if you want to clear that out if that bothers you go ahead and just right click on it and say clear and it'll clear the transcript Okay, so off we go. We are now going to enter a model for this proficient. So to start off with, let's do the entity definition. So entity, entity, and I'll go proficient ex is. I noticed that entity didn't turn red, so I must have misspelled it. So entity, okay, there we go. And if I wouldn't have caught that, I could have caught it during my compile stage. Okay, my ports are going to be in this situation. It's x, y, z. 
And I'm getting this from this description right here. So this is what I'm entering right here. I'm going to have X, Y, Z, and the output is F. Okay, so this is, I'm doing this based upon the project description. Okay, the mode for these are all going to be in, the type is going to be bit, and then I have an output F, which is going to be uh, mode out, type bit, and then I end my parentheses, semicolon, and I go end, entity, and I'm good. So now I go architecture, and I'm going to go proficient ex underscore arc, that's a unique name uh, of my architecture, and now I go of, I link it to proficient ex, and I say is. I'm ready now to begin. And what I can do is I can, I'm going to go ahead and put in architecture down here, and archi architecture. And this will actually compile right here. So let, let's save it and compile. Notice that the asterisk is down here saying I haven't saved. So I save that, and I'm just going to compile just to make sure that everything is okay so far. And it was successful. Now, this doesn't do anything because I haven't modeled anything, but I'm ready to go. All right. So what am I actually modeling? Well, uh, if I wanted to see the windows, just to give you a little uh, bit little tip on window you can undock the actual window itself and it'll take the text editor and it'll pop it out and I might want to do that let's see here I might want to do that so that I could see my uh, logic expression so I've undocked the window so that I can come down here and I can actually see what I'm trying to do <clears throat> and then when I want to put it back in the model sim I'll dock it okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go F gets assigned and I want to use parentheses uh, to dictate the order of precedence okay remember if you do logical assignments uh, it go it it executes them left to right uh, unless you put parentheses, then parentheses always win. So we want to do parentheses. So I'm going to do parentheses and let's start. <laughs> okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to do uh, this is going to be the parentheses that hold x not y not z not. The way that you do a inverse of a variable is you do the not operator before it. So by doing that, I'm going to put parentheses around that so I can really keep track. Not x is the equivalent of x not down here. So that's how I modeled that. And then I'm going to do and, and let's go ahead and put some more parentheses, and I'm going to do not y, and then I'm going to do and, and I'm going to put parentheses just to stay consistent, I'm going to do z. Okay, so there is my my min term for x not, y not, z. And I can have uh, lines that wrap around to the next line as long as, because VHDL is looking for the semicolon to dictate the end of a statement. So I can have this statement have 20 lines if I want. It's that semicolon that ends it. Okay, so now I want to do, uh, I'm going to or it with the next min term, which is x, y not, z not. And I can actually start getting a little copy and paste going here. So I can come down here and I'm going to line these up so that it's easier to read. So in this situation, I'm going to have x and I'm going to line my ands. And then I've got y not and then I've got z not and I'll actually push my or over there to line it up and then I'll do or and then let's go ahead and do the last min term which was I copied and pasted that is simply X and I'll line up my ands and then Y and I'll leave it like that and then ended with Z and there it is so to end this I put a semicolon okay so I've got my entire model complete save it and I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into model sim so I dock it again and when I go back it's docked and now I can simulate or compile it and see if we had any syntax errors okay so it was successful let's go ahead and compile the test bench and we're now ready to simulate so to simulate I go into the library tab I go into the work folder here's my two entities that have been compiled and I load the test bench by double clicking on it so the window starts flashing and, and everything's happening give it a few seconds to stop flashing and then you'll notice you have a wave tab all right, so now I'm going to go over to my objects window, right click, and say, not that at all. So that was, I clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, go add to, wave, signals in region. Region is the top level. Okay, so I'm ready to simulate this. So I go ahead and I just need to tell it how long, and I'm going to do 80 nanoseconds again, and I just hit run. Okay, so I've got, uh, I got an error down there. Let's make sure that that, if I wanted to restart my simulation, I can go restart say okay uh, sometimes okay so it's fine just had something to do with that misclick that I did before so let's go ahead and come over here notice that I'm zoomed all the way at the very end so I want to go right click zoom full 
and here we go okay so I've got some stuff going on here and it looks like it's it's operating okay but it's hard for me to see with the waveforms uh, expanded like this so let's go ahead and combine X Y and Z so I select them and I go combine signals and I'm gonna create a new vector just for display purposes called XYZ and there it is and let's go ahead and delete that okay so here we are we're asserted for row 1 for row 4 and row 7 so does that match what I originally wanted and the answer is yes 1 4 and 7 so we're done we did it we actually made this simulation work one last one one tip when you're looking at numbers like this you can also display this in a, a decimal form so if I click on this and say right click radix if I do unsigned decimal it'll actually convert that into an unsigned decimal code and this is really uh, obvious that it's working when you're using a midterm list because you have one four and seven and so we did it we have simulated this and everything is good